Hey guys, today I'll show you a Thailand horror TV series named School Tales the Series. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The first story, titled Vengeful Spell, begins with a girl running frantically through the school, as if something was chasing her. She was eventually cornered in a classroom where she opened the window and jumped from the building. Her body was discovered by her classmates the next day, showing her gruesome death. The news quickly spread on social media platforms, with people discussing the incident. One girl's comment stood out among the rest, claiming that the deceased girl had deserved her fate. She then removed her sock to reveal the dead girl's name written on the sole of her foot. She calmly erased the name, seemingly connected to the girl's death. It's revealed that this girl was named Pleng, a well-known horror author in the school's club. Her ex-boyfriend was dating the deceased girl. Heartbroken after losing her boyfriend, Pleng skipped class to clear her mind in the storage room. She heard someone calling her name from behind, a voice that seemed to appear and disappear. Following the sound, she found a red box on the ceiling. Inside were numerous photos and a handwritten note. The note said that if you wanted to curse someone, you had to write their name on the sole of your foot and recite the incantation on the paper while stomping. In this way, the cursed person would then suffer an accident. To test the curse's authenticity, the girl shown at the beginning of the story became Plang's first victim. Now thanks to the curse, Plang was on top of the world. Not only were her works gaining attention, but she had also met a handsome senior, a renowned director in the club. Their continuous interactions led to a blossoming romance. However, after a while, Pleng found a photo of the senior with another girl on his phone. This infuriated Pleng. One day, Plung was stopped by a girl named Ginny, the girl who had taken the picture with the senior. Ginny provocatively claimed that she and the senior had been together for many years and told Pleng to stay away from him. Ginny was rude and aggressive, which only made Pleng angrier. Pleng couldn't understand why someone always coveted the man she liked. When Pleng returned home, she wrote Ginny's name on the sole of her foot and viciously stomped on the floor while reciting the curse. As the curse spread, Ginny immediately felt unwell. Her hearing was amplified, and even the faintest sounds could harm her. She covered her ears in a panic, and suddenly everyone around her turned into evil ghosts, screaming her name over and over. Eventually, she collapsed on the floor with blood pouring from her ears, but she didn't die on the spot. Meanwhile, the senior found playing in the storage room and learned the reason for her anger. He explained that Ginny was actually his spoiled sister, who had teased many of his female friends in the past. It was all a misunderstanding, and Pleng's worries were finally eased. That night, as the senior was about to leave after walking Pleng home, she invited him to stay a bit longer. The atmosphere became rather intimate, and they moved closer to each other. While getting intimate, the senior accidentally noticed Ginny's name on Pleng's foot, which puzzled him. He questioned Pleng about it just as Ginny called him, crying for help. The senior hastily left, leaving Pleng frustrated. Pleng then remembered to spray diluent and tried to erase Ginny's name from her foot. However, no matter how hard she tried, the name remained clearly visible. Meanwhile, Ginny was tormented by strange noises and nearly went mad. In the end, she tore off her own ears to make the annoying sounds stop. But then, all the screens in her house turned on, and the students inside transformed into evil ghosts, urging Ginny to end her life. Ginny tied an electrical cord to the doorknob and the other end around her neck. She moved forward, eventually hanging herself on the door. When her brother arrived, she was already lifeless. On the other side, Pleng was filled with remorse, not expecting to cause Ginny's death. With Ginny dead, her name was easily erased from Pleng's foot. Late at night, Ginny's name reappeared on Pleng's foot, indicating that she was now cursed in return. She was suddenly pulled by something and her foot became unbearably painful. Upon inspection, she saw pus-filled sores that formed a ghostly face. The ghostly mouth opened, spewing clumps of hair. This horrific scene caused Pleng to lose her mind. She took a knife, slashed open her foot, and forcibly tore off the ghostly face. She finally made it to the storage room, but couldn't find the red box hidden in the ceiling. Suddenly, a ghostly hand grabbed her ankle. It was the bloodied Ginny crawling towards Plang. Ginny grabbed Plang and shoved her arm into her foot. The scene was utterly horrifying. In desperation, Plang grabbed a nearby hacksaw and without hesitation began sawing her own leg, growing increasingly frantic. The next day, the school janitor followed the blood trail to the storage room and discovered Plang's lifeless body. She was covered in blood and slumped on the floor, her lower leg severed from her body. 
Upon learning that Plang had been killed, the senior left a message online, reminiscing about their happy times together. He then lifted up Plang's leg, and written on the sole of her foot was Plang's name. It turned out that the senior had also discovered the cursed box and used it to curse Plang, ultimately avenging his sister. In the end, the box was returned to its original place, and no one knew when the next curse would be activated. The second story, titled 7 a.m., begins in a cursed high school, where in the senior class, a message appears on the blackboard every morning at 7 o'clock. It specifies a book, and if any student forgets to bring that book to attend the class, time will stand still at 8 o'clock. It's as if the entire school has been paused. Then, a wicked ghost takes away the student who forgot the book and erases them from the memories of everyone around them, as if they never existed in this world. Though everyone doubts the authenticity of this curse, the occasional empty seats in the classroom and unfamiliar names on the attendance list force them to believe. The timid student named Q arrives early at school every day to take a photo of the cursed message on the blackboard and share it with his classmates. Despite his tireless efforts, he still doesn't receive their approval. Instead, he faces daily complaints and dissatisfaction, most prominently from the bully gang of three. They even demand that Q arrive at school before 7 every morning to check what book they should bring to school for that day. Whenever Q is bullied by others, the classmate, Tan, always comes to his defense, making Q feel inexplicably excited. It's not that Q doesn't want to arrive earlier, he too has his own difficulties. The next day, Q arrives on time and takes a photo of the cursed message to share with the class. Suddenly, a bloody hand reaches out behind him, but when he turns around, there's nothing there. As Q prepares to leave, he sees the reflection of a ghost in the glass on the door, getting closer and closer. That afternoon, a horrifying scene unfolds in the classroom. Everyone stares blankly at Q, then picks up their pens and stabs their own left hands until they're a bloody mess. The teacher calls Q's name loudly, pulling him back to reality, but unbeknownst to him, an evil spirit has set its sights on him. After school, Q is once again confronted by his classmates. They all complain that his message comes too late, causing them to be tardy. Tan has no choice but to defend him again. On the third day, Q arrives at school earlier and sets up a camera in the classroom. He wants to use the video footage to prove the ghost's existence to everyone, but a ghostly hand suddenly grabs his neck as he turns around. As the choking sensation intensifies, his vision becomes blurry. When Q wakes up, he finds himself in the school's medical room with Tan by his side. There's no valuable information in the video he filmed, just footage of him choking himself. The two of them return to the classroom together, and on the way, they run into a bully, who is frantically searching for his book mentioned in the message that day. He remembers bringing it to school, but can't find it anywhere. As the 8 o'clock bell rings, colorful smoke fills the classroom, and the 7 a.m. curse is fulfilled once more. Those students who didn't bring the exact book are taken and erased by the evil ghost. As time went on, the relationship between Q and Tan grew stronger, much to the bully leader's dissatisfaction. In front of the whole class, the bully leader questioned Tan, asking her if she had already become close with Q. It turns out Tan was the bully leader's ex-girlfriend, and seeing her showing affection with a classmate naturally upset him. At this point, Tan finally revealed that she had gotten close to Q only to make him fall for her, so that he would continue serving the class every day. Little did she know, Q had overheard her conversation from outside the classroom. The next day, Q arrived at school on time, entered the classroom, and intentionally erased the book's title from the blackboard. He sent the photo he had taken earlier to the class group chat, intending to give them a wrong book title. At 8 o'clock, the bell rang again, and it was only then that everyone realized the severity of the situation. The evil ghost appeared, screeching, and the students tried to flee the classroom, but someone had locked the door. In the dimly lit room, the evil ghost began its wild rampage. Chicken screams echoed throughout, and the glass on the door was stained red with blood, growing thicker and darker. By the time the teacher began roll call, Q was the only one left in the classroom. The third story, titled The Headless Teacher, begins in a vibrant high school where the food stall lady busied herself making drinks for the students. Then, a teacher in fat walked in to flex her chubby body. Her smile was warm, and her steps were light despite her heavy body, like a lotus flower swaying gently in the breeze. She approached the food stall lady's stand like a chubby hammer, but her voice was soft like a newborn chicken, which earned her the name Mrs. Hammer. The food stall lady had borrowed money from her, and today she had come to collect the debt. 
However, the food stall lady's business was not doing well, and she couldn't repay her immediately. The handsome but shady teacher named Teacher Shady intervened to mediate. Since he was good-looking, Mrs. Hammer decided to come back another day. At that moment, the principal walked over and reminded everyone to be mindful of their actions as the students were watching. Unexpectedly, Mrs. Hammer yells at the principal like a chubby hammer. It turned out that he had also borrowed money from her and had no choice but to slink away from the scene. Mrs. Hammer followed him gracefully, but couldn't catch up due to her chubby footsteps. Instead, she encountered a group of mischievous students who had created a series of parody comics based on her appearance. Angrily, she tore one of the comics, only to be mocked further by the students. Students who make mistakes must be punished, but how could the kind-hearted Mrs. Hammer hammer those mischievous students? She only lightly hit them a few times. The punished the two naughty students were very resentful, hiding in a corner and complaining about Mrs. Hammer. The school janitor overheard them and chimed in, teaching them to repay kindness with kindness and take revenge when necessary. He even said that a gentleman's revenge is never too late. One of the naughty boys accidentally spotted a food wrapper and thought of a great idea to get back at Mrs. Hammer. On a dark night, the two naughty students, dressed in white sheets and wearing ghostly masks, planned to scare Mrs. Hammer. They even set up a phone to capture her embarrassing moment. As the door opened, a pair of greasy legs and high heels slowly entered the room. The moment the two stood up to scare their teacher, they realized that the person in front of them was a headless Mrs. Hammer. In panic, both of them fled for their shitty life. The following day inside the school's greenhouse, a male student discovered the lifeless body of Mrs. Hammer. However, her head was nowhere to be found. The campus was abuzz with speculation as everyone wondered who the murderer could be. The two were panicked, fearing that what they had seen the previous night was the ghost of Mrs. Hammer. It was then that one of the naughty boys remembered his phone was still in the teacher's room. They had to retrieve it as soon as possible. As night fell, the two naughty students, along with a virgin monk, headed to the dormitory. Despite their search, they couldn't find the phone. As they ventured deeper into the dorm, they encountered the headless Mrs. Hammer holding the phone. It seemed she had something to say, but couldn't communicate. The three of them acted out a guessing game. One performed seriously, while the other two made wild guesses. Thankfully, their persistence paid off, and they eventually understood that the teacher wanted their help finding her head. She had no intention of hammering them. Upon returning, the two analyzed the situation and suspected the principal killed Mrs. Hammer because of his debt. However, the principal was deeply immersed in a new romance with his a toy, so this theory was quickly dismissed. Another suspect was the food stall lady, who also owed Mrs. Hammer money. Despite thoroughly searching her stall, they found no useful clues. The sight of their once gentle and kind teacher in such a state saddened them. Then they recalled the janitor's bold words and wondered if there was some history between them. They decided to investigate his tool shed. One naughty boy suggested treating the janitor to a meal to lure him away, while the other, accompanied by Mrs. Hammer, searched the shed. They found nothing unusual until they came across a freezer. Just as they were about to open it, they heard the voice of Teacher Shady outside. In desperation, one of them hid inside the freezer. Teacher Shady noticed the broken lock and went in to investigate. As he was about to leave, the boy sneezed like a pig, alerting him. Meanwhile, the janitor was called by another teacher to fix a ceiling, forcing him to return to the tool shed. Hearing the noise from the freezer, Teacher Shady grabbed a saw for protection and cautiously approached. Inside the freezer, the boy discovered the hidden head, illuminated by the phone's light. As Teacher Shady opened the freezer door, he wasn't shocked to see Mrs. Hammer's head. Instead, he threatened to send them to their doom. At that moment, Mrs. Hammer bit Teacher Shady's arm, allowing the boy to escape. However, Teacher Shady wouldn't let them go so easily. Mrs. Hammer's body clung to Teacher Shady, but he quickly broke free. He chased the naughty boy around the room with the saw. Just as it seemed Teacher Shady would deliver a fatal blow, the boy threw Mrs. Hammer's head to his playmate, who caught the head with a swift kick and then executed a powerful shot, hitting Teacher Shady and knocking him out. Mrs. Hammer successfully reattached her head. Upon waking up, Teacher Shady found himself tied up. Initially, they expected him to resist, but he crumbled under pressure and revealed the truth. As it turns out, Teacher Shady had a penchant for young boys. One day, while preparing for some play in the greenhouse, he was discovered and filmed by Mrs. Hammer. Believing Teacher Shady to be unfit as a teacher, she intended to report him to the principal. It was then that Teacher Shady revealed his sinister nature and brutally killed Mrs. Hammer. He then buried her body and hid her head in the freezer. 
In the end, the two naughty students knelt before Mrs. Hammer, sincerely apologizing for their previous actions. Knowing she would soon depart, Mrs. Hammer urged them to focus on study, not pranks, and even prepared gifts for them. They excitedly opened the boxes only to get pranked on, and Mrs. Hammer got the last laugh. The fourth story, titled Beautiful, begins with a girl named Dao, who was an ordinary-looking girl, but had a strong desire to become beautiful. Every day, she tried various remedies and secret techniques, but none seemed to work. School beauty Orn had a sweet appearance and an approachable personality, making her the center of attention wherever she went. She was the school's image ambassador and also signed with a modeling agency early on. All of this seemed unattainable to Dao. Still, Dao stubbornly searched the computer, hoping a miracle would occur. One day, when she typed in that she was willing to do anything to become beautiful, her computer screen suddenly started flickering, and the lights in her room began to flash. A website appeared on the screen claiming it could make her beautiful overnight. However, as a condition, no matter how curious the people around her were, she could not reveal this secret to them, or she would lose everything she had gained. Dao did not hesitate to click Accept. Suddenly, there was a frantic knocking at her door. When she opened it, there was no one there, only a beautifully crafted box on the ground. Inside the box was a bottle of glowing red liquid. Dao did not hesitate to drink it all. Soon, her eyes turned red, and when she looked in the mirror, she was astonished to find that her appearance had indeed changed. This was the miracle she had been waiting for. The next day at school, Dao immediately became the center of attention. Boys were competing to take pictures with her, while girls' faces were filled with jealousy. This news quickly caught Orn's attention. Seeing that Dao could replace her at any moment, she desperately sought out Dao, wanting to know how she had become beautiful overnight. However, Dao could not reveal that secret. Her body was slowly changing. A thin line appeared on her neck, and no matter how she pulled, it would not come out. Dao yanked it hard, and the thin line cut through her entire neck. It seemed as if her head was slowly separating from her body, but luckily this was just her imagination. Moreover, she lost her sense of hunger, replaced by a craving for blood. She drank every drop of blood she could find, then the frogs in biology class. Finally, the decaying bodies of cats and dogs around the campus all ended up in Dao's grasp. But soon these kittens and puppies could not satisfy her growing desire anymore. In the end, she chose to prey on the people around her. The sleazy janitor entered Dao's room at night, thinking he had found an opportunity to have intimacy with a beautiful girl. However, in the next second, he was devoured by Dao. After eating, Dao was in immense pain. However, this was the price she had to pay. Since Dao was unwilling to reveal her method of becoming beautiful, Orn decided to investigate on her own. She started by rummaging through Dao's belongings, but only found a lunchbox with a strange smell. Then she searched through the trash that Dao had thrown away, but it yielded no results. Eventually, she rented the room next to Dao's home to monitor her every move day and night. Through her efforts, she caught Dao on camera collecting dead stray cats and filmed her eating toads. She threatened Dao that if she didn't tell her the truth, she would expose these videos and ruin her reputation. Dao told her that the price of becoming beautiful was to eat rotten flesh every day. Orn, however, had gone insane and was willing to pay any price to her beauty, just like Dao had been. Knowing that there was no way out, Dao decided to take Orn home, hoping that seeing the truth would make her change her mind. As soon as they opened the door, a strong smell of decay greeted them, but to Dao, it had become a unique fragrance. Upon entering, Orn quickly found the mysterious liquid. Dao, however, could hardly suppress her pain. She bit down hard on the table, enduring immense agony. But Orn was immersed in the excitement and paid no attention to Dao's suffering. She drank the remaining liquid in the bottle. Soon after, many tentacles sprouted from Dao's head, revealing the true form of a malevolent demon. She told Orn that the liquid in the bottle was the saliva of a flesh-eating demon. Once consumed, one's nose would help them select the most suitable food. At that moment, Orn smelled the scent of a baby. It turned out that the pregnant landlord had heard noises in the room and came to see what was happening. The demon then opened the door and the landlord's fate was sealed. The fifth story, titled The Book of Corpses, begins with a new student, Siparn, who had just transferred to the school. She reported a case of campus bullying to the principal. 
Although the perpetrator, Bully Girl, was punished accordingly, it was clear that the principal didn't take the matter seriously. This was because the school was facing a more challenging issue. A male teacher had mysteriously disappeared. The media's extensive coverage had brought severe negative consequences for the school. The report also made Saiparn a thorn in Bully Girl's side, and she furiously searched for her on campus, waiting for an opportunity to retaliate. Saiparn hid in the library to escape Bully Girl, and it was because of this incident that she met a new friend, the librarian named Narin. From then on, Saiparn often helped out in the library. One day, while sorting books, Saiparn noticed a small hole in the ceiling, steadily dripping water and emitting an unpleasant smell. At that moment, a book suddenly fell to the floor, catching Saiparn's attention. It was the Book of Death, with scratches and damage on the cover that resembled claw marks. Without giving it much thought, Saiparn simply put it back in its original place. The newspapers were once again covering the case of the missing male teacher, and it seemed that Narin was deeply concerned about it. Saiparn, intrigued, asked Narin about any legends surrounding the school. She believed that every school had its own stories. Narin shared a story from 20 years ago about a girl named Ploy, who was bullied by her classmates and locked in a bathroom. The school was nearing a three-month summer vacation, and Ploy was forgotten by everyone. She eventually chose to terminate herself. It turned out that the bathroom was located directly above the library. Legend has it that Ploy wrote about her pain and torment in a book, and whoever obtained this book could have their wishes come true. However, the book mysteriously disappeared. Afterward, Saiparn encountered the school janitor and noticed that the smell of the liquid dripping from the library ceiling was very similar to the smell of the bottles in the janitor's car. The janitor explained that it was a preservative used to maintain the freshness of biological tissues. At that moment, Narin interrupted their conversation and asked the janitor to help fix the leaking ceiling. The next day, Saiparn curiously approached the second floor bathroom. While she was considering whether to enter, Bully Girl grabbed her hair and pushed her into the bathroom. It turned out that Bully Girl was almost expelled from the school because of Saiparn's report, and she wanted to teach her a lesson. After humiliating Saiparn, Bully Girl locked her in the bathroom as a punishment. Saiparn noticed that the door was covered in scratch marks, likely left by ploy. A bloody pencil then caught her attention. As she picked it up and examined it, a ghostly figure of a girl appeared in the mirror, staring intensely at Saiparn. Blood oozed down the walls, frightening Saiparn into a scream. Her scream alerted Narin, but when she turned around, the ghostly figure had vanished from the mirror. When Saiparn went home, she discovered that the Book of Death had appeared in her backpack. She was captivated by the stories inside and found herself transported back to the bathroom from 20 years ago. Ploy was a quiet and introverted girl who longed to make more friends, but was often ridiculed by others. The day before summer vacation was Ploy's birthday. Some classmates lured her to the bathroom, claiming they wanted to celebrate her birthday. Ploy was overjoyed, thinking she had finally gained her classmates' approval. However, as she blew out the candles, her classmates smeared cake on her face with a dead rat hidden underneath. They then locked the bathroom door and left. Ploy repeatedly banged on the door, but all the teachers and students had left for vacation, and no one noticed her. As time passed, Ploy fell into despair, and her resentment reached its peak. She wrote about her torment and her curse on her classmates in a book, and then stabbed herself in the neck with a pencil to end it all. The book was the Book of Death that Saiparn now held. Later, the girls who bullied Ploy were all arrested, but before they could be tried, they killed each other in prison. Their deaths were just like those described in the book. Saiparn discovered more stories in the Book of Death, written by people who had obtained it later. There were various bizarre curses and mysterious ways of dying, confirming that the book could indeed fulfill the owner's wishes. One day, Saiparn encountered Bully Girl again, and the Book of Death was snatched away from her. Bully Girl mocked Saiparn, saying she could only seek psychological balance through such means, and that there was no way the book could make wishes come true. She then cut Saiparn's hair in front of everyone, intending to make her a baldy to humiliate her. Saiparn knelt helplessly on the ground, enduring the ridicule from the mean girls. At that moment, Ploy pushed the Book of Death in front of Saiparn and urged her to kill Bully Girl. So Saiparn wrote a curse of death in the book, unaware that she was now being watched by Ploy. On the way home from school in the evening, Bully Girl blocked Saiparn's path. To her surprise, Bully Girl was unable to control herself and began to hit herself, just as the curse Saiparn had written in the Book of Death dictated. 
Soon after, Bully Girl fell to her knees, begging for mercy. Finally, she took a pair of scissors and slit her own throat. Obviously, all of this was orchestrated by Ploy, who had been helping Saiparn fulfill each curse step by step. Watching Bully Girl die before her eyes, Saiparn was filled with regret. She ran back to the library to find the book and discovered a curse written by Narin within its pages. At that moment, the leak in the library ceiling quickly expanded and a red liquid began seeping out. Suddenly, a corpse fell from the ceiling. It was the missing male teacher. Narin appeared unexpectedly and shared her story. When Narin first graduated, she was determined to become a good teacher. However, her poor communication skills often left her isolated. Then she met the male teacher, who she naively thought was her true love. To her dismay, he forcefully took advantage of her. Narin contemplated ending her life, but decided that the male teacher should die instead. So, she wrote her own curse in the book. But to make the wish come true, she had to trade her body and soul with the evil spirits. At this point, her body had become a host to too many evil spirits, and they urgently needed a new body to carry them. Saiparn was the perfect candidate. The sixth story, titled Lunch, begins in the school cafeteria, where the food stall lady busied herself making bone soup. Due to her delicious soup, her stall quickly became the most popular spot on campus. However, some people couldn't stand others' success and suspected her of adding illegal ingredients to the soup. Internet celebrity Kong was one of them. That day, he was determined to reveal the soup's secret ingredients. Naturally, the food stall lady tried to stop him, but Kong felt there was something fishy. During their heated exchange, they knocked over the soup pot, revealing a bone. Kong was convinced it was dog meat, attracting a huge crowd of students. They started discussing and focusing on the dog meat. While everyone was distracted, the food stall lady quickly hid something wrapped in white cloth. Under Kong's instigation, the students accused the food stall lady of wrongdoing. The incident quickly spread online, and due to Kong's exposure, he became a hero in the eyes of keyboard warriors. He even got a tattoo to celebrate, seemingly enjoying the feeling of being a hero. One day Kong was bumped into by a mysterious man and angrily followed him to the gym. The man pulled out a long knife, and Kong, sensing danger, tried to call for help. However, the man had already disappeared, only to reappear behind Kong, ready to strike while moving erratically. Terrified, Kong fled the gym. Due to Kong's reporting, the food stall lady's business plummeted, and students constantly sent her insulting notes. Kong then confronted the food stall lady, suspecting she had hired someone to follow and threaten him. He noticed a group photo on her desk and was convinced that her son was the mysterious man. He even barged into the kitchen with classmates to expose the secret of her soup. An onlooking man couldn't stand it any longer and pointed to an urn of ashes in front of a memorial tablet, revealing that the lady's son had been killed a month ago and his head had not yet been found. She had just experienced the greatest sorrow of her life. He urged Kong to stop causing trouble, as the food stall lady still had to carry on with her life. The man pushed Kong out of the kitchen and forced him to apologize to the food stall lady. At that moment, the principal arrived, confirming that the meat in the soup was chicken and presenting an authoritative report. Kong became the target of everyone's criticism, and they quickly turned against him, accusing him of fabricating facts to gain attention and framing an innocent lady. Unable to bear the injustice, Kong sought comfort from his best friends, who urged him to apologize and stop causing trouble. In the end, they had a falling out due to their differing opinions. Heartbroken Kong hid away to drown his sorrows. He watched the online accusations and insults about himself, thinking about his friends' attitudes towards him. At this point, only proving that there was an issue with the soup ingredients could save everything. He set his sights on the stray cats roaming about, planning to throw a dead cat into the soup pot to confirm his suspicions. Under the cover of darkness, he stealthily entered the cafeteria kitchen, only to make a surprising discovery. The table was filled with lavish offerings and a mysterious pattern, along with a photo of the food stall lady's son. The eerie atmosphere was reminiscent of a seance. He quickly took out his phone to take a photo, but his phone malfunctioned, the screen flickering non-stop. Suddenly, the mysterious figure appeared again. Kong spun around, but there was nothing there. He turned on the light and searched the entire room, but found nothing. When he turned off the light, the mysterious figure appeared once more. Kong cursed at the figure, challenging him to reveal himself. Unexpectedly, the figure removed his hat, revealing a headless ghost. Kong was terrified and ran for help, but the teacher suspected he was on drugs and didn't believe his ghost stories. Furious, Kong returned to the kitchen with a knife to prove his story. This time, the room was empty. 
Gathering his courage, Kong unwrapped the white cloth on the table, revealing a boiled human head inside. The bone soup that the students had been drinking was made from human heads. Panicking, Kong turned to run, but the mysterious figure blocked his escape. The food stall lady appeared and ordered the figure to withdraw, then calmly wrapped the head in the white cloth. Realizing his chances were slim, Kong begged her for mercy, promising to keep her secret, especially about the human head soup. But knowing too much, Kong had to die. Only the dead can keep secrets forever. So the food stall lady sliced Kong and then finished him off with practiced skill. The next day, the lady's food stall was open for business as usual. Everyone was amazed at how delicious the bone soup tasted. Just then, a group of boys screamed and ran out of the cafeteria because they had found Kong's tattooed skin in their soup. The seventh story, titled A Walk in School, begins with a student named Boyd, who is a staunch atheist. He believes that people's belief in ghosts and gods stems entirely from their fear of the unknown in death. Research also shows that nearly 80% of those who claim to have seen ghosts suffer from mental health issues. To prove that ghosts don't exist, Boyd enlists his best friend, Tum, and decides to visit the school's haunted hotspots, live-streaming their adventure to debunk the false legends. Their first stop is the traditional dance club. Boyd has Tum light candles to create a spooky atmosphere. At that moment, his classmate calls, but Boyd impatiently hangs up and says not to disturb him through the live stream. He then shares the ghost story of the dance club. Once upon a time, there was an ugly dancer boy whose face was always mocked by his classmates, and he could only play an ugly role because of his appearance. One day, he received a love letter from an admirer, filled with sweet words expressing her adoration. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a cruel prank by his classmate. After enduring merciless mockery, the dancer boy decided to seek revenge. He replaced the props used in the performance with real weapons, and during the show, he stabbed the classmate who had ridiculed him, causing her to die on the spot, and the dancer boy later terminated himself. In subsequent performances, students would often see the dancer boy's ghost performing alongside them. However, Boyd explains that the props used in performances are carefully managed by designated staff, thoroughly inspected before each show, so it's impossible for them to be switched. Thus, it's clear that this story is fake. As they prepare to leave for their second location, Boyd suddenly finds blood dripping from his forehead. He assumes it's from accidentally scraping against the wall when they climbed in, and doesn't pay much attention to it. Next, they arrive at the gymnastics room, which also has a haunted legend. Rumor has it that a female student who was a potential candidate for the national gymnastics team had an accident during training. Mysteriously, a thumbtack appeared on the balance beam, causing the student to lose balance after stepping on it. Her head hit the floor upon falling, and ever since, people have often heard strange noises coming from the gym at night. As expected, Boyd explains that it's impossible for a thumbtack to be placed on the balance beam. The area is cleaned daily, and the coach always carefully inspects the equipment. In conclusion, this ghost story is nothing more than another lie. Afterwards, Boyd and Tum aimlessly wandered around the campus. Tum mentioned that there was one more ghost story they hadn't talked about. Boyd confidently claimed there wasn't a story he didn't know. Tum then began to tell another tale. Once, there were two best friends who wanted to prove that all the ghost stories at their school were fake. They went to the last haunted spot on campus, the sealed-off rooftop. The two friends played a coin toss game where the winner could make the loser do anything. Boyd, growing impatient, interrupted Tum's storytelling. Boyd then announced on his phone that their mission was complete. They had explored every location, not encountering any ghosts, so the conclusion was that ghosts simply didn't exist. Suddenly, the hallway lights went out, and some dancers appeared, surrounded by red light. Boyd thought it was a prank from his classmates and slowly approached, asking who they were. The dancers, however, ignored Boyd's presence and began to dance, gradually moving closer. Realizing something was off, Boyd hurriedly ran away, but more dancers appeared, surrounding him. Fortunately, Tom woke Boyd up in time, and they both rushed back to the gymnastics room. Before they could catch their breath, they heard the sound of a door opening outside. The two quickly hid, and a gymnast entered the room. She went to the balance beam and began training, just like the story Tum had told. However, her twisted limbs kept stretching, and she soon approached where Boyd and Tum were hiding. Panicking, the two ran wildly around the campus. All the ghosts that Boyd had previously denied existing now seemed eager to prove their existence. The two friends hurried to the rooftop where Boyd hesitated to stay and suggested they find another exit. An argument ensued. 
Tom proposed they settle the dispute with a bet. He took out a coin, saying that the loser must follow the winner's advice. Without waiting for Boyd's agreement, Tom tossed the coin. Landing heads up, Tom won. It turned out that several years ago, Boyd had brought a friend to this very rooftop. The coin toss game in Tum's story was actually their own. As the winner in the past, Boyd had sent his childhood friend into the sealed-off area behind the rooftop. The friend called for help, but out of fear, Boyd abandoned him and left. That friend never returned. Back to the present, Boyd received another call from his classmate asking if he was with Tum and reminding him to check the class group chat. It turned out that Tum had been in a car accident on his way to school. It's revealed that throughout their previous live stream, Boyd had been talking to Thin Air, and the classmate who had called earlier just wanted to warn him of something fishy. Both of his best friends now stood before him, having met with accidents of their own. As they walked one by one through the rooftop door, Boyd was overwhelmed with emotions. He remembered his promise to always stand by his friends, thinking that perhaps it was time to fulfill that commitment. So Boyd followed them into the unknown. The eighth story, titled The Curse, begins with a legend saying that in an abandoned building of the school, there is a magic infirmary located at the end of a hallway. If you sit in the wheelchair inside, facing away from the door and make a wish, the ghost of a nurse will appear and grant your desire. Korn, a student at the school, was an academic standout and a target for his struggling peers. One day, the bully gang of three cornered him, hoping he would help them cheat on the upcoming final exams, which would determine whether they could graduate. Korn was physically weak, but refused to give in, and as a result, he was beaten up. On the day of the exam, the three bullies remembered the legend about the infirmary and decided to bring Korn along to make a wish. The abandoned building was in disarray, but it couldn't stop the students' desire for knowledge. They arrived at the infirmary and quickly found the legendary wheelchair. Korn was forcefully placed in the wheelchair, his hands and feet tied by his classmates. They waited for the ghostly nurse to appear, hoping she would grant their wish for passing grades. Afterward, the three bullies were still uneasy, unsure if the legend was true and if Korn would actually help them. They knew the importance of the exam, and one student went off to relieve his anxiety. Just then, the door behind Korn slowly opened, and the ghostly nurse approached him. With a single motion, she released him from his bonds. Korn claimed not to be afraid, but he was likely wetting his pants. The nurse didn't hurt him, but kept asking if he wanted to make a wish. Terrified, Korn escaped in his wet pants. In the final moments before the exam, Korn hurried back to the teaching building, only to be confronted by the school bullies. They pinned him against the wall, urgently asking if he had made his wish. At that moment, someone discovered a dead body behind the gymnasium. It was the bully leader from the three bully gang. Korn couldn't help but say that he didn't expect his wish to come true. It turned out Korn had wished for the death of those who bullied him in front of the ghostly nurse. A wheelchair appeared in the hallway. An eerie wind began to blow, and in the blink of an eye, the wheelchair approached the bully leader. As he fell, he pulled on a cloth, revealing the ghostly nurse sitting in the wheelchair. Suddenly, a drill from above fell. The remaining two bullies, the bully couple, tried to flee the campus, but the wheelchair blocked their path. In an act of self-defense, the bully girl pushed her boyfriend towards the wheelchair and made her run. The nurse caressed the bully boy's handsome face and practiced push-ups with his heavy body. By the time the teachers arrived after hearing the chicken screams, the bully boy was lying in a pool of blood. The bully girl had the best chance of surviving, but was a step too late. She was suddenly pulled to the ground, her ponytail dragged by someone. The reflection on the floor showed the nurse's figure. In the end, the bully girl was hung from the basketball hoop. The school urgently postponed the exams, asking students to return home and wait for further notice. While everyone was discussing the incident, Korn couldn't help but feel pleased. The two classmates who had always tormented him before couldn't stand it. They deliberately knocked over Korn's drink and forced him to apologize. At that moment, Korn stood up defiantly, asking if they wanted to end up like the three bullies. The two warned him not to joke about the deceased. But Korn believed he could determine people's life and death, his words filled with hostility and disdain, which led to all the classmates' condemnation. Korn warned them that he would make them pay all of these. Furious, Korn went to the infirmary, sat in the wheelchair, and recited everyone's names. The ghostly nurse quickly appeared behind him, but this time she had a condition. She needed to exchange with Korn, one of his body parts, for a single wish. As Korn's three fingers suddenly turned black and decayed, the nurse explained that it was the price for his previous three wishes. Korn begged the ghostly nurse to take back his wish, but it was too late. 
As the wheelchair continued to appear, the students died one by one in various bizarre ways. With each death, Korn's body rapidly decayed. In the end, he died in the wheelchair in the infirmary. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.